you slipped and fell in a 400 degree fryer. What were you doing during that time? Well, I was making some donuts. Yeah. And my feet slipped out from under me and I fell in the fryer. Now. How, how deep did you fall in the fryer? I fell in where when I pulled out my hands, there was no skin up past to my wrists. Oh, geez. On both hands. When, so, but between, now remember I was born with clubbed hands. Yeah. So, but after, before I fell in the fryer, my doctors had just straightened my wrists. So when my hands went in the fryer, the first thing I thought of was my doctors are going to kill me. <laughs> the second thing I thought of was, thank God, I had had them straightened. Because I can't show you, but if you imagine bending your wrist, mm -hmm. I would have landed on this part of my wrist, meaning mm -hmm. my arms and my face would have gone in the fryer. That's looking for the good. I felt that I, I felt that it, especially during the darkest parts of my life, mm -hmm. I felt I had to be better than everybody just to be equal. And I felt that I had to do something just so big that I'd be normal. Like what? What did you do that was so big so you could be normal? Oh, nothing really. I think one of the reasons when I rode my bicycle across the United States and Canada it was... <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> Uh, nothing really. When I rode my bike across the United States and Canada. <laughs> but I think that was part of that growing process. <laughs>Looking for the good, that's Ward Scarman Foley. That's what he does, he learned from his mother and father. So what he continues to do with looking for the good is helping kids what he's been through by going to their schools and talking to them. And when I speak at schools, especially junior high and high schools, there's so much sadness and so much teasing and being made fun of and laughed at. And, and I often tell kids at these schools, it isn't gonna stop until it stops at home. They see what their parents are doing. Their parents are constantly teasing. Their parents are constantly making fun of others. They're gossiping about the neighbor. These kids see this at home. And it's just a reflection. Absolutely. That's all it it's, is. And it will never, to be honest, it will never stop because truthfully, it's part of growing. Explain. When I grew up, and, and to make a long story short, a lot of that bullying is what taught me compassion and empathy, believe it or not. I got to tell you, I had to ask Ward, how can you possibly get to empathy and compassion to five guys that wanted to beat you up, that beat you up, and darn near killed you? Well, I realized through time, through a little bit of time, that the anger that I had originally had, or the resentment or the, or the frustration, was only causing me more problems within myself. And being able to laugh at it, being able to say, hey, I had another surgery. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm adding another scar. Are you laughing? Are you, but are you truly laughing at it? Absolutely. Without a doubt. See, <laughs> okay, I believe yeah, Don't you. tick me off. <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation there, man. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because it all, it, all, it all strengthened me. You know, when I would go off into the park all by myself, whether it be in high school or, or college, or that, that trying to accept myself, feeling like I never fit in as a child. And I would go off and I would be in a beautiful day. The sun would be shining and all I'd see is darkness because of the being teased and made fun of. That happened a and, lot. And growing up. And then as I developed and as I looked at what I was really learning and how I developed into finding compassion and empathy and how all these scars helped me become who I am. You know, if you erase these scars, I'm not who I am. It's those scars that make us who we are, and it's what we do with them that counts. That's one of the problems with the scars. It's people just look for excuses or to blame someone else. It is, it is us. It is you and me driving the bus. And you got to fix it yourself. Yeah, and it's our responsibility because when you go to bed at night or, or whatever you're doing in the day, really, it's all about you. <laughs> You ha my mom and dad used to say, Ward, the world doesn't revolve around you. <laughs> but my world does. And I always, I always told them that. It's, it's up to me. I can find excuses all day long, and it gets me nowhere. I'm just sitting in the bus with you, and we're going nowhere. And that's one of the things I find most in, in, our, in society doing speeches is, is the people finding excuses and blaming other people for their problems instead of embracing their problems and moving forward. A lot of times kids ask me, Scarman, Scarman, 
why are you always happy? And I say, I'm not always happy. But when I get out of bed in the morning and I can walk to the bathroom and I can brush my teeth all by myself, I'm pretty happy. It's our perception that's always ours. Kids always ask me a lot of questions. When they're asking about how being happy and they ask a lot of times how much pain I'm in and things. And I tell them that I can be in the worst pain. For me, pain is all relative, but for I can have a bad, bad night. And instead of laying in bed and tossing and turning and whining and complaining to myself, if I get out of bed and I drive to the hospital and visit a hospice patient at three in the morning, suddenly my pain isn't as bad. It's just another way that we can get out of ourselves, help somebody else, and it really helps ourselves. Do you do that? Absolutely, I do it. I probably do it once a week. How? So you're in bed at night and you're in pain from what? Just from... Riding my bike across two countries. <laughs> no, just the arthritis, the wear and tear. The Obviously, I don't walk like you do. So just the pain. Uh, I always tell people, I was born with a lot of my problems. So I've had my whole life to learn how to deal with them. What a gift and a blessing that is. So I've learned how to deal with when I don't feel well. Or I've learned how to deal with things. There it is again. Deal with it. An ongoing solution of all these master classes were dealt with what he was going through. And what he went through went on to be a gift and a blessing. And I asked Ward to explain what exactly that meant. Look what they've taught me. Look at, look at what I have become. I'm probably the strongest person I know. Even though I have weak moments, I can laugh at myself. Wow, that's the best. Laughing, speaking of laughing, that is the best. When I can look in the mirror, and I tell kids this all the time, you have to look in the mirror and like what you see. That's what my parents taught me. And until you can even, can't, when you begin to like what you see, that's when you begin to live. Eventually, you'll begin to laugh at what you see. And when you can laugh at you, and you've talked about this, you do it all the time. Laughter truly is one of our greatest gifts. Yes, laughter is a great gift. And another great gift is when you go share what you have learned and experienced with kids to help them get through their difficult times. When I'm there and I can just feel the kids pay it, the way they pay attention and the way I can just see in their eyes mm -hmm. of how lost so many of these kids are. Mm -hmm. It's just that part makes me sad, but it keeps me going because I know, I know the love and unconditional love that I have for them. And I wish all of us could have that for everyone. I wish we could, and maybe I live in a naive or fictitious world, but I would rather live in my happy little world and try to help others and try to make a difference than do nothing. And there's another ongoing solution with the Naster classes and how to get through difficult and tough and dark times is to help other people, to serve humanity. And that's what Ward teaches us here. I asked Ward to do one more of those. I asked him to look into the camera and tell us why he does what he does and why it's important to him. I was doing a speech in California at a so-called normal high school. When I was done, within a few hours, I got an email from a high school girl saying, thank you for coming to our school. I've been a cutter for several years. I didn't even know what a cutter was. I had to look it up and ask a couple people. But in her email, she said, thank you for coming to the school. I'm gonna ask my parents for counseling tonight. I was gonna commit suicide. And I hope someday that I can do what you do. There's nothing more beautiful than that. All I did is reach out to help somebody else and it helps me more than it does even that girl. Don't ever be afraid to ask for help. No matter how old or how young you are, we all have scars, each and every one of us. A lot of mine you can see, but we all have them. And it's what we do with them that counts and what matters. And that's a direct quote from Scarman, from my old buddy Ward. I gotta tell you folks, people wanna know what their purpose in life is. Ward knows his purpose in life. The reason he does, because Ward has dealt with all the difficulty things he's been through, and he's found the gift and the blessing in each one of them, and he's went on to help people. That's your purpose in life. What have you been through? What have you learned? And how do you get through them and help other people?
That's your purpose in life. I want to thank you so much for coming to these classes, and I especially want to thank Ward for opening up his life, his soul, his heart, his inspiration, his humor to us and what he's learned. The next class is going to be a short one, not just because I'm in it, but it's just of Ward's simple philosophies and deeds that he has done to hopefully inspire us that we can take the scars that we've been through and how we can turn those scars into gifts and blessings and help other people. That'll be in the next class coming up. I look forward to seeing you there. As my phone went off, I gotta go. I ordered a pizza. See you then.